I'm glad to see that the, the, the WoW is finally kind of going in that direction. Especially because, you know, uh, Sotor did it years ago. They did. Still a great game. I still have my account for that. I just haven't played it in years. What I game haven't is played Sotor. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. I thought that's, those servers were dead. You can't use no, those no, servers that's, anymore. That's a different game. That's no, you're thinking about... That's, uh, that's Galaxy uh, something. Yeah, uh, um... Not Galaxy. No, I, I don't get no Star Wars Galaxies. I don't Galaxy, it, but I guess, yeah. But I yeah, Star Wars Galaxies, Wars. which was actually people actually there. There's actually a the the original server is gone, but a, a, another group of fans actually recreated the whole game for free. Wow. never looked so good. Two incredibly sexy men will rise for your auditory pleasure. Here's your host. Keeping up with the Geek Bros. Yes, yes, yes! The Keyword of the Geek Bros podcast, episode 67. I'm your host, Vibe, and here with me is my fellow Geek Bro, singular. Darth Flex. Darth Flex is in the house. Before we get started, Darth Flex, you know the deal. I need you to tell these fine, fine people how to find us on social media. Absolutely, you beautiful Gentiles. You can check us out on Geek Bros. Well, I'm sorry, on Instagram and Twitter <laughs> at Geek Bros with a zero. That's G E E K B R zero S. You can also email us at geekbros with zero yahoo.com. Please send us something. Send us some cool stuff. Pictures, your family, pictures of your dog, something. Yes, I we'll, like dogs. We'll, we'll put it up I there. Like we'll, we'll, we'll describe it. Just or Photoshop that's, that's something funny about us. I don't know. I'm not good at Photoshop. I'd be great if you guys could, like, could like since so I don't have to hire an animator, draw myself, uh, Darflex, and Garbanzo. That'd be fantastic. Transparent PNGs, please. Separate files so we can put them all together. Thanks so much. Can we also get a Photoshop of Joe with another man? All right, so <laughs> you can also check us out on Facebook.com slash Geek Bros. With a Zero. You'll find a lot of good stuff there. Um, it's also, true. There's a lot of posts. There's a lot of posts. The first place to find these. The first posts place! Is WeBeGeeksPC.com. Now, if you're interested to see what this duo is, I mean, duo for the past couple episodes, uh, a beautiful contrast of Egyptian cinnamon and what I can only describe as milk chocolate, you can check us out on youtube.com slash Vibre Studios. That's V I B E R E C S T U D I O S. Did you just refer to some of the Egyptian cinnamon? Yeah. Yeah, why not? That is the funniest description. I'm sorry. That's fantastic. That threw me completely off. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Flex. Ooh, I'm sorry. Egyptian cinnamon. Beautiful. I want to change your lower third to say that. Um, before we hit, now we're going <laughs> to. You calm myself down. That caught me off guard. All right. Before we get into it, let's get to comments and questions from you, the audience. All right. Uh, no Facebook comments um, this week. So, you know, we're very sad to see that. But, you know, we'll go there. Uh, Instagram comments. That's uh, Geek Bros with a zero, G E K B R zero S. On our uh, podcast recording snapshot or screenshot, show, we got uh, Gold Hearted Vegans said, Hey, we love your feed and would love to collaborate. Send us a message so we can get you a t shirt. So that's interesting. I don't know if that's spam or that's legitimate, but we're gonna. I am gonna reach out to them, see what kind of T-shirt they're talking about. Because of course, last week we talked about vegans versus omnivorous diet, and it was, it was. Every time I ever talk about vegans, I always get a, an influx of vegan followers, and then they unfollow when they realize that I'm not vegan. So it's it's really funny. Isn't and, that crazy that they can't support other lifestyles? Like I'm not a vegan, but I clearly support veganism. Yeah, but remember, we're we're heathens to them. We are we are. Uh, but do you know what heathens mean? Like the the definition of heathen. The real definition? No. Yeah. The, it means the pursuit of pleasure. That, that's literally what the definition of being a heathen is. That's why yeah. religious and, fanatics don't like heathens because they have all the fun. Exactly. So, you know, and then, of course, uh, Darflex wanted to comment himself. He said, damn, I'm getting small. Uh, can I get a steroid sponsorship or some kind of supplement support? And he, and he did uh, at Pro Supps. <laughs> they have pretty good stuff, man. And then they're so, pretty good supplements. That's yeah, actually pretty good. So, so Pro Supps, you know, send us free stuff. I'll even do it, you know, beta aniline. Oh, no, actually, uh, they, have, they have great beta aniline. Uh, really? Yeah, they, they have they have action. Yeah, being on top, they have pretty good uh, plant based supplements as well. 
Oh, there you go. See, uh, of course, our homie, our one and only, our unofficial fifth geek bro, Squeezy Bits, uh, sent us a message. Uh, it was an article. I tried to edit an entire video on an iPad. I haven't seen this article yet, and it's not on, on the list here, but it's the response to um, the Adobe Premium Rush that I had. Oh, look at them gambling. We don't condone the gambling. <laughs> Allegedly. So I'm going to read that article. I'm going to gonna because uh, I am interested in mobile editing only because it's a pain in the ass to come home and sit at this chair sometimes. And if I could lay on my bed and edit on like a, an iPad or something, I'll invest in an iPad, a really good one or a Surface Pro to be able to edit um, something like that. So thanks for that for that uh, tip. Squeezy bits. I will look it up. Moving on to YouTube comments this is where the fun begins. Um <laughs> We're going to get our first, first squeezy bits, which is always positive. Squeezy bits uh, on YouTube. He said at one hour, 10 minute mark, mobile mobile Adobe sounds interesting, but their Netflix subscription style model is not for me. Uh, it probably functions better with Android's mouse and keyboard support, but probably still won't. Uh, there's more to that, but I didn't get all that. Um, I, I It's true, but if you get the... If you get the uh, the full Adobe Suite package, it actually comes included with it. And yeah, it's pricey. It's 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 anywhere from thirty to sixty dollars a month, depending upon what you're what you're licensing and whether you're a corporate or you're a student or whatever. So uh, I'm gonna check it out. But he's he's definitely right. You get you have to pay monthly, uh, or you can pay pay for the year. Now originally Adobe used to be able to pay like well several thousand dollars for that particular set of of softwares, but I mean it makes it more you know, prosumable. Now for... Our, I'd like to read the next one. By all means, by all means. So, this is uh, this is our first, I guess, I mean, I don't think of the negative review. It's not our first. We've had, listen, they've come at me plenty of times on our other videos. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. this is just one where they were actually critiqued. Well, read it. Yes. Read it before I say it. Alright, so this is from listener um, Cuck Sadner. <laughs> commented, um... Chaz <clears throat> Sadner. Yeah, it's as sad as his life. All right, so this show has gone to shit! Exclamation point. The sound quality is horrible! Exclamation point. The news being reported, it's constantly, period, check your grammar, asshole, wrong! Exclamation point. The only thing that seems interesting is flex science crap, which is the flex science crap. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm before you rip this one a new hole, I'm going to... Uh, actually, Joe Joe Taro uh, took responsibility for the um, for the audio quality of last episode, but he, you know, which is fine in, in a follow up comment. But um, he sounds like he's talking about the show, the the I would say the reboot, the revamp um, for the last what maybe ten episodes now. It's been I want to say um, the show has gone to shit. Here's the thing about the show: the show is still pretty remarkably close to the the first fifty something episodes. The the style is still the same. The format has only been altered. Uh, the names have been changed a little bit. Um, the sound quality is horrible. I agree. We are ripping the sound from Skype. And if you are a long-time listener, which, you, which I assume you're a long-time listener, you were aware that before our previous host departed the show, we had made the, the collective decision to switch to um, Skype in lieu of meeting at the studio and missing weekly. So we decided to trade, to, to promote consistency and trade quality because it was hard to get all the all of us, even the original host, to, to come to the studio to record every week. I understand that. And and um, Skype has afforded us the ability to be consistent and even provide a longer platform. Now we're at our own places. We're able to talk longer and enjoy it. So I understand that, and I, and I, I agree, but you got to work with us here. Now, where you say the news is being reported constantly wrong, I would like some clarification on what's being reported wrong. Because again, as the previous format was, I'm still we're still getting the same articles from the exact same sources or and more yeah. like from before. Furthermore, when I when when I report on these articles, Rose, I cite the source of where I've gotten this article from. So the article, if the news is wrong, then it, then then the 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 information that's being purported is wrong, and that criticism should go toward the sites in general where I'm getting the articles from, not from me myself. Okay, and you know the only thing that seems interesting is 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 flex science crap, which I you know whatever whatever that means. Um, so. <laughs> That's my rebuttal to Chaz uh, Sender, whoever you really are. Sodomizer. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, 
I wonder if we are wrong or if we're just not putting out an, like enough news or I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. My only rebuttal to that is, I mean, I'll keep it simple. And by the way, I mean, I, I like this. I, I don't dislike you at all because, you know, we need this kind of stuff. True. But in the immortal words of Eric Cartman, why don't you stack my bowels, Mr. Garrison? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm insulting you, but take it as a joke, bro. It's like going to see a stand-up comedian. I'm going to fucking rip your new one no matter what, but we still love you as fans. <laughs> also, suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, if you guys want to send us more critiques, by all means, we are going to read them. We are going to respond to them. But uh, constructive critiques, please. And, and please cite your source when you want to critique us. I'm just curious because uh, I'd like to get better. Yeah, but exactly. Like, something as I mean, vague as that, um, you got to give me more. So I can this, is like, this is like asking like a girl, what's wrong? She's like, nothing. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, like, very big. Like, but okay. I mean, in my in our defense, I think the show rocks now. I mean, it rocks more than it did originally. That's I agree. I say we I, have more fun. With, uh, the, we're a little bit more real. We're I more think. real. We were For uncensored. Sure. Uh, I I I think uh, it's kind of like what Squeezy Bit said that he loves our um uh the the chemistry of us, and it, I I agree. So I I disagree uh, with him with with uh with Santander or whatever. I think the show is is, is, is is really forming its own right now. So, but I could be wrong. If you guys think I'm right or wrong, by all means, uh, email us, uh, tweet us. Definitely, definitely comment on our stuff. And you know, I've got no problem reading reading uh, negative comments. It only helps us grow. Moving on to Twitter comments, uh, Miss Miss Lady to you, that is uh, Miss Lady to you too, on Twitter. She actually uh, gave us a shout out. Thank you so much. It says if you're into gaming. Yes. And so much more. You should follow at Geek Bros. They hit up a lot of topics and are funny. Check them out. So thanks so much, Miss Lady, to you. Um, to you, too. That's at Miss Lady, to you, too. Uh, really appreciate the shout-out. Uh, we don't get many of those. So to, to, so to have that sent out there like that to your followers, that means something. Even if it gives us one more follower, it, it, it helps. Uh, we also had... We also put up another... Uh, <laughs> Rig. Another poll on the Geek Bros Twitter. Guys, check out the Geek Bros Twitter. It's on fire now. Finally. There's, there's a lot of funny stuff up there. Even I am I'm, I'm kind of caught off guard with the funny things that are put up on, on our uh, on our Twitter. Check it out. So uh it is it's how old is at Vibra Studios now? And you had four options. You had 27, too old, 33, or doesn't matter, smash. So 50% said said uh too old, 50% said said smash. We had two votes. So, uh, yes, I did have a birthday uh, last Tuesday, and it was slamming flex. I know. Bro, so upset. Off the chain. But, yes, I did have a birthday. I turned uh, 35 years young, and I'm rocking it. Okay? I'm still rocking it. So, uh, no emails this week. So, that's it for comments and questions from you, the audience. Um, gents, tell us about your weekend. So, Dorf Flex, tell me about your weekend. I think it was pretty uneventful. Um, really, I just worked. Honestly, the most exciting thing that happened to me was today. I think I got food poisoning again. Been nauseous since noon. <laughs> Have you tried to take a pregnancy test? <sighs> <I'm> scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> that's. <laughs> Flex has got it today. Um, well, for me, the weekend was simple. It was babysitting. As, as usual, I'm a damn good friend. I will throw that out there. Um, a little bit, a little bit of video editing, and that's about it. But I have a fantastic Tuesday, 35th birthday. My mother insisted that we go to her house and she and for a barbecue. I was like, okay, it's gonna be a regular bar barbecue. No. This lady decked this place out. We had all the alcohol. We had all the food. And I had a sizable, sizable group of my um, friends and, and uh, family and family friends that came over. And we just drank and drank. And um, my kids were there. Other kids were there. But they were doing their own thing. But some of the videos that I posted are hilarious. Uh, my, my new lady friend came as well. So that was kind of fun. And... It was a good time. Flex, I mean, when I say you missed a lot of whiskey... I saw the videos, man. I saw the videos, especially with the cake. Oh, dude. Dude, it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. You would have had a good time. You should have... You should have I know, you man. Should have but it's not just you. You know, it's not you. You know, Garbanzo didn't show up either. I know. Uh, I mean, I, I really wanted to go, but unfortunately, I did get out much more than expected. We got uh, 
couple of UFC headliners coming out. No, not at all. And, yeah, kind of we had so much fun. We had so much fun. We, we skipped the after party. We said, forget Iguanas. We were just having that much fun that we didn't even go to Iguanas. We ended the night. We, the night began there. The that night ended there. great, man, because I hate going out. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. We had the outside, the new little gazebo thing going on right there, too. Uh, it was a lot of fun. My mother is the jam, okay? That's what She's I like a girl. really gangster person, dude. Like, I have no idea. You know about gangster shit? She invented gangster shit. All right? It, look, you, you listen, you guys got to meet my mom. It'd be great. It'd be great. So um, anyway, that was a good time. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was a good birthday celebration. Thank you all to those who came out and for all the great pictures and videos. If you guys want to check them out, actually, the pictures and videos are all gone out. Well, if you have me on, on your on your social media, you can see the stuff out there. It's really cute. I got cake on my face. And then I got a kiss, and then, and then I got a kick, kick on her face, and then more like pictures. A, like a kiss on the mouth? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Did, you, did you not see the video on, on, on Facebook? I, I just saw the meat that when I thought she was going to meat check you. No, no, that, that's, no that's, that's, that's my friend, but then there was the other one. You didn't see the very end of that video? No, I didn't. Yeah, maybe, you should, maybe you should see the very, very end of that video, okay? okay? Vibe is a stud now. So, um, anyway, uh, that's it for our weekends. All right, <clears throat> so, five. Yep. Serious question. Yep. What's going on with the Geek Bros? Uh, what isn't going on with the Geek Bros? Uh, I've been dealing for the last week. I know you guys have noticed this that episode sixty six was uh, took took over a week to go up. We were having server problems with WeebyGeeksPC.com. It wasn't just us; it was the entire mm -hmm. server. Uh, I only got this thing fixed. Was it yesterday? Finally, I we had to call the administrator. We we got on the phone together. We finally did it. We had to change the entire login information. <laughs> Uh, to get me finally back on to, to, to put that up there. So hopefully that won't happen again. I apologize for that, guys. But at least the video recap was out much earlier to comp, you know, to not compensate, but to, to whatever. So that's what I'm telling you guys. We do uh, two ways. We do we do the video recap and we do the audio. So if for whatever reason the audio is missing, you should always check with the with the Twitter, the Facebook, and the Instagram because when when I realized it couldn't go up, I made sure I put a delay up there and I explained the situation. And then when I, when the video recap went up earlier, I put that up too. So if you want to know where we are and where we're missing, because you know we're supposed to be up weekly, usually every every Wednesday, but I delayed even this recording. I delayed because. I wasn't sure we because PC was going to be up, and there's no point on, on recording it if, if we weren't going to get it up on time. So that's what's going on. That's what I was dealing with. Um, I also have been dealing with strikes to our to the YouTube channel, which is another reason why I've got to get Geek Bros on its own channel. Unfortunately, my other podcast, which is a little more controversial, is causing me trouble on YouTube, and it has blocked my ability to upload right now while I'm appealing a strike to the channel. That is the reason why I have that post on our Spider-Man uh, review. I have not posted our, uh, our Spider-Man trailer reaction. Why well, I have not posted our, spa, our, our, our our Shazam video either. Right now, I'm not able to upload to YouTube. Wherever the strikes are coming from, so far I've gotten two appealed. I got two more left to to restore my ability to upload. So that's going to be dead for right now. But I'm telling you right now, all this is doing is making me fast track why Geek Bros is own YouTube channel so I can separate the Geek Bros content from all the other Vibes of Geek content so I can deal with this separately. So that's what's going on to Geek Bros, but I promise you guys I'm going to get something out there. Maybe I'll put up the, the one of the episodes on, on IGTV ahead of YouTube. I'm working on it. I'm doing the best that I can. So that's it for the Geek Bros. So, Vibe, tell me, what were we talking about Wednesday? <laughs> What we're going to talk about Wednesday is Geek Bros approved movie of the week. Uh, what's new in the gaming world? We have video games out this week brought to you by Darflex. The Battle for Azeroth continues brought to you by Darflex. For inebriated fitness, we have What the Heart Tells Us. Ooh. Anime and Animation Invasion. Love, Death, Robots Part 8. Good Hunting. For Gadgets Are Us, Apple kills off iTunes after 18 years. And Samsung's new Note Oh, so oh, look, oh, look, Lewis just said, and Samsung's new Note 7, open mic, Marvel and talks with Keanu Reeves to join the Eternals, Avengers Endgame director developing Magic the Gathering series at Netflix, Robert Pattinson moves forward as the new Batman star, Evan Peters sad that Quicksilver's big storyline will be left unresolved after Dark Phoenix, Wolverine cut from Dark Phoenix storyline because of age gap between with Jean Grey. So that is what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, episode 67. But first, Garbanzo's in the building, Garbanzo. Hi, Garbanzo. We can't hear you, Garbanzo. Uh -oh, Garbanzo. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear yes. me now? Yes, good, good, Ooh, good. Ooh, much better. Garbanzo. Much better. I missed I you guys. 
I missed you too, girl. Bonzo. I have the question. Did you did you read the script for today? I am actually up, I'm opening it right now. I just got in. I had a couple issues with a crazy neighbor, but that's for another story for the day. The hot I would one like that I to hear that. Time? F I. Huh? The hot one what? that I that I met that one time that that got complimented to me on your camera. No, no, not that, that, not that neighbor. No, she did. Did I tell you the story about that flex? Oh my gosh, she was oh, slamming hot, yeah, and me. she spoke to me the entire time. And Spanish? She, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I was so nervous. I was like shocked. She, she was beautiful, but I had the camera in my hand. She's like, great camera. I was like, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know it is. I was just, it was a shame, dude. When I say she was pretty as heck, she talked to talk to me to start conversation with me and to tell me good night. I was. Did she have like these big curly, like a big curly hair? Yeah. Oh no! You're thinking about the, the the tall, slender one with the braids. Yes. 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 Mm. Yes. Light skin. Yes. I, I I believe she might be single. We'll always talk about that later. Listen, we do need to talk about that later. Um, I need you to pull up the YouTube comments. I need you to read uh that YouTube. Comment. I wonder if you have anything to say before we get started about the YouTube comment. Um, it was a, it was it was I wouldn't say negative, but it was a not it's not favorable comment. Read it real quick and see if you have a uh something you'd like to say before we get started. Oh. Look. Mr. Yeah. Chaz Sandier. Yes. The yes. show has gone to shit. The sound quality is horrible. The news being reported is constantly wrong. The only thing that seems interesting is flex science crap. Yes. Aww. I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love to know if you have a response for uh, for for this. Apparently, long term listener, because if it's gone to say it's gone to shit means you were listening from before. So yeah, absolutely. Well, it I means mean that that he in, that well, he or she enjoyed the previous version of this show prior to the reboot or the the or the, the shake up. So I'd love to hear if you have a response for for this listener or yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, um, I actually um to Mister or whatever the hell his his name is, I. I want to be sandler um here's the thing um we appreciate you for listening all these times and and uh, and thank you for giving us the input about referencing our sound quality so that's something we could definitely work on um but the whole thing is about news being wrong i mean fake news is still news right i mean hey amen brother so here's the thing. If you really want uh, want to put something out there, feel free. To go, go ahead, give us an email, and we'll uh, tell us how to what how what you would do better, or better yet, how about you start your own YouTube channel and start doing it yourself, and see if you can do it better. Then go ahead, bro. I appreciate you know competition is fun. It makes us better as people, and as it makes us a better podcast. But besides that, bro, got nothing but love for you, and uh, thank you for not bashing the fat kid. So that's awesome yeah, for you. That's that's good. That's good. All right, well, Dad, with, with that being said, it's time for the Fresh Scent. Fresh Scent. Geek Bros approved movie of the week, Dark Phoenix. This is the story of one of the X-Men's most beloved characters, Jean Grey, as she evolves into the iconic Dark Phoenix. During a life-threatening rescue mission in space, Jean is hit with a cosmic force that transforms her into the most powerful mutant of all. Uh, wrestling with this increasingly unstable power as well as her own personal demons, Jean spirals out of control, tearing the X-Men family apart and threatening to destroy the very fabric of our planet. The film is the most intense and emotional X-Men movie ever made, and it's a combination of 20 years of X-Men movies. Uh, as a family of mutants, uh, they come to know each other and love uh, this most devastating enemy yet their own. This is directed by Simon Kingberg, and it, is it was released uh, today. Um, okay. One... Gentlemen, I assume we're, we're gonna we're gonna see this probably next yeah. week and, and and do something about yeah, for it. Sure. Bit saw it. Huh? Rizzy bit saw it. He did. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Did he did, did he give a like a review or anything? Or, or at least his wife did. She said it was pretty cool. She loved it? it. She quoted that she likes the train scene. Don't know what that means. Oh, uh, I think okay. I, there's a there's a small little uh, uh, snippet of that in one of the trailers recently. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm that's kind of cool. My only problem with this is that they're trying to say that the Phoenix Force came from outer space, but didn't she show some of the Phoenix Force in Apocalypse? Am I wrong about that? I, I, know, I, I believe she did, but I think the actual Phoenix Force itself uh -huh. is technically a cosmic entity. But then what did she show off? She, what, what Phoenix Force did she show off in, in Apocalypse? Now, I, th I think that because was... Because just... that was... That was so, her, so her natural in, in, innate power is similar to the Phoenix? Because I, I remember what I saw... And that was a firebird coming out of her as she's walking across across this thing, a small firebird nonetheless, but a firebird. So, how do you how do you rectify the fact that she already had some kind of force there? And she gets the force again. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's all that's bothering me. 
Now, now at the same time, maybe they could probably put it down. And, and this is, again, I'm giving them a lot of credit in this aspect. Mm-hmm. But the way that I would see it is the Phoenix Force is, a, again, a cosmic entity that travels across time and space. Mm-hmm. So technically speaking, it could have attached to her sentience uh, a small amount of it as almost like a tracer. Okay. So for the actual features, for as to to make sure to see if she's actually worthy and to able to hold it, and then for the <laughs> to arrive later on. That, you know what? I'll take that. If, and if that's in the movie, that I'll take that retcon. That's fine. I like that. Yeah. A lot. If, if they actually, if they, if they actually do that that way, I would be okay with it because it's it's feasible. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, well, we're definitely going to check this out. I'd love to say that that the you know the Geek Bros will get together next week and uh, we'll watch the movie and. We'll film a review. Um, it all depends upon whether my camera actually is fixed or not when I go retrieve it this weekend. And oh, yay, we get the camera back. Yeah, the back is it's back, but um, but what? But they, they they can't check it because they never they don't have a they don't have a um, a battery to check it. So because they didn't, they didn't take my battery and they don't have a battery for that particular camera, so they can't ver- verify. So That's I gotta weird. go over there. No, because when I when they sent it to Texas, they said you don't need anything. Te- Texas will have everything they need. They, they need. Yeah. All you need to do is get the camera. But the actual place that sent it off for me in Miami, well, they don't have the equipment to turn it on, so they can't verify that it's fixed. They're only going by based upon the fact that that they said it's fixed, and yeah. they can't find that the they never sent Texas never sent them the um the 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 work order so that says what was done to it. So now they're concerned. Oh, really. Saying, yeah, they didn't send the work order. You know, you know that work order you get that you say, okay, this is what was done yeah. to it, and this is exactly. how it cost. It didn't come back with it, so they're a little concerned about whether or not, you know. So whatever, we'll see. But yeah, that look forward to that in the future. We're gonna move on to what's new in the gaming world. Video game is out this week. Brought to you by Darflex. Uh, once again, I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm still getting my game news from VG twenty four seven. Again, still too busy to cross reference for some of our lower listeners. You know, we we hear what you said. Just 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 give me some time, man. Just give me some time, bro. <laughs> remember, yeah, remember this is as much as we would love for this to be our full time jobs. Yeah. If you guys want, send us some money and we can make it our full time jobs and we'll get exactly. you that much. I am stuff. working on our Patreon. I'm That's working good. on our Patreon. I'm working on a lot of stuff. Or Patreon. some paid sponsors. I mean, like I don't know, uh, maybe Nintendo. And then I'll be able to cross reference some stuff. Oh, but, oh Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew, yeah. Or, or Lipton, Lipton Iced Tea is also fantastic. Lipton Iced Tea would be a good paid sponsor as well. You guys just throw in or some Apple. Throw or Loot Crate. crate. All right. We have to get back on our, on our yes, unboxing yes, show. Yes. Then we can get Loot Crate. So we're going to start with June 4th. That's, that's the beginning of releases for this week. We have Stay in the Light for PC. The Elder Scrolls Online. Elsweer for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Warhammer Chaos Bane for the PC, PS4, Xbox One. Battletech Urban Warfare for the PC. Per Cheng for the Switch. Then we have... Wow, this is crazy. Okay, no, that was a typo on VG247. All right. Uh, the Legend <laughs> of Heroes, Trials of Cold Steel 2 for the PS4. Persona Q2, New Cinema Labyrinth for the 3DS. Reventure. Official launch for the PC. Conqueror's Blade for the PC. Now, back we're on June 5th now. Barrel Trauma for the PC. Held It Loose for the PC. Now we're on June 6th. We got Toki for the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Road to Gundong for the PC. Journey. Road to where? Sorry. To, no, no, to, to Long Dong. Sorry, sorry. Long Dong. Dong Long. Long, yeah. long Dong. Long Dong. Long. Black Trials. All right. So, <laughs> Journey for the PC. Hugh for the Switch. Now we're on June 7th. We got Warlocks 2, Godslayers for the Switch, and July 18th for the PC. So, on June 7th, we got Octopath Traveler for the PC. Oh. We got Omen Sight Definitive Edition for the Xbox One. And what's the last day of this week, man? <laughs> the what? The. This is the seventh, so the last day of the it week is, is the eighth. The eighth. That is it for this week. It's actually not a very eventful week. Oh, okay. Well, mm. we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like dying. Here, right? You're not, you're not helping our case against against Santander. Okay. <laughs> well, look, listen here, Cuck Sandander. 
San- Sander, Sodomines, or whatever. We're, 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 we're still, I'm still quoting it off an, uh, uh, an online source. It's not our news, so you can suck it, buddy. All right. <laughs> the battle for Azeroth continues. World of Warcraft, <laughs> Dark Flex. Suck it to me. There's no oh. Oh. Yeah, so I started playing with a new orc uh, warlock, which is pretty cool. His name is Thorthin, which just means... Um... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that what text was... I responded to, to Flex's uh Flex's text. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm playing now, the now, now, now you know how it feels, right? Now you know how it feels when you comment on our little chat here and it throws me off. Good. Now you know how it so, feels. Sorthin, which means God of Thunder. Now, in the world of Warcraft, actually, so with the new pass coming out, the Rise of Asara, we have a Rise of Asara preview where you get to navigate the perils of Nazjatar in new Beth Benthic gear. This looks pretty interesting because you know we've had a quite a bit uh, of updates in gear as far as like legendary, and well, actually, the most common one would be heirloom uh, heirloom gear. What the hell is that noise? Um, uh, that's uh, that's that's Garbanzo's respirator, bro. Jesus, <laughs> Christ, that's extremely loud. Again, not helping. Our our response to Santana. <laughs> All right. I, I so, noticed about that. I didn't realize that it was actually going right into the mic. I will not happen anymore. It sounded like baby Darth uh, baby Darth Vader. That's all I can hear. So with, <laughs> with, with 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 this preview that you're actually able to try out now is the odds are stacked against you in Queen of Jara's home territory. But with the right equipment, you can turn the tides in your favor. The Rise of Asar, we're, we're we're introducing a new type of equipment called benthic gear, which you'll earn and collect while adventuring the Naga domain of Nazjatar. As you explore Nazjatar, you'll collect prismic mana pearls, so bound currency you can spend to purchase benthic tokens and upgrades. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's kind of like, like a much better version of heirloom gear because you can actually upgrade these using some kind of currency rather than just sitting on it and trying to level through it while other people destroy you in the arena. Now, these do bind to your account and can be used to gain a piece of upgradable benthic gear specific to your armor type, you know, cloth, leather, mail, and plate. Again, just like heirloom gear. Starting at item level 385. With enough time and effort, players can dedicate their hard-earned mana pros to upgrade pieces to level 425. Just shy of heroic level raid gear. Which, by the way, uh, heirloom gear is pretty good for starting characters because you can share them throughout your whole account. So that means if your level 100 has purchase some heirloom gear you start a new character you can use it for that character as well and just they kind of level up with you but they are capped at a specific level but you are able to upgrade them now it seems that uh, benthic gear will be kind of a much better system to that though it's still not as good as heroic gear and like all the legendary gear stuff like that because those are actually pretty pretty powerful items you gain either through specific um, world events or raids or, or sometimes even game masters. But, you know, obviously these heirloom and these benthic gears will not be the most powerful gear that you can actually gain in the world of Azeroth. But it is a good way to actually level through and look cool. And with the transmorgification, transmorg, transmorg, for sure, you're able to... If if you don't like what your gear looks like, you can pretty much change your gear to whatever gear you like, but keep the same stats. It's just putting like a like a skin on your gear in case your gear looks stupid, which I think is pretty cool because if you actually like the role playing aspect of World of Warcraft, you can actually stick to a specific character and keep kind of like dark armor or something. You can even dye your so some of your gears. So that's pretty cool. But besides right. purchasing benthic tokens with mana pros, you will also sometimes find them in treasure chests and on enemy starts to zone. So again, this is. Again, a much better system than heirloom gear because it kind of makes you work, right? Rather than just going and buying it and just leveling through it and not knowing what to do with it. But each piece of Bentha gear boosts a somatic bonus that applies in Nazjatar, the upcoming Ashar of the Eternal Palace raid. These bonus might provide effects that boost your damage, slow down your foes, or even increase your mount speed while adventuring through this perilous region, which this is great because, God... Uh, mount speed, while they're great, unless you have like specific or powerful mounts, uh, they they kind of suck. Like some of them are great though. If you have like underwater mounts, like the like the seahorses and stuff, those are pretty gangster. But imagine if you can like increase your speed from like 100% to like 300%, that'd be pretty good too. 
Now, you can customize your character with up to six unique bonuses. Put together pieces to create a powerful set for combat, collect a, a set to optimize for exploration, or mix and match for the best of both worlds. Additionally, each piece has predetermined secondary stats, which allow you to have more control over your character's build. Bentha Gear, now for current plays, Bentha Gear is currently available for early testing on the Rise of the Shara public test room. So make sure you jump in to check it out. Uh, I will try my hardest to jump in on there. Actually, I am trying to grind a little bit more. Uh, for those who don't know, I, I'm, I'm actually co-owner of, of, of the guild with the artist formerly known as Juancho. And he's got some pretty powerful characters as well. And I'm sure he's going to be getting on this. But once I have more insight on the test realm, I'll be able to give you guys some more stuff. But it looks promising. I mean, the story keeps on going and going. And it's kind of opening a little bit more of the story of the War of the Ancients, or it's just to bring it back Queen Azhar, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, maybe they'll confirm that the Night Elves, or the Elves in, in general, come from trolls. So that'd be pretty cool for me, at least. <laughs> well, you thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we always love when you discuss World of Warcraft, so my eyes can glaze over, because I have no idea what we're talking about. But you, this is my favorite well, part of the I, podcast. Well, I, well, actually, I, I will say this, though. A lot of the stuff that I mean, that you're you're talking about with nerfs is like changing the armor, some superficial stuff, um, all that kind of stuff. I mean, like it's it's just kind of glad I'm glad to see that the the, the WoW is finally kind of going in that direction, especially because you know uh, Sotor did it years ago. They did. Still a great game. I still have my account for that. I just haven't played it in years. What I game haven't is played Sotor. Uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. I thought that those servers were dead. You can't use no, no, those servers that's, anymore. That's a different game. That's no. You're thinking on. about that's a uh, that's Galaxy uh, something. Uh, uh, um, not Galaxy. No, I, I, I don't get no Star Wars Galaxies. I don't know that's but I yeah. But I yeah, Star Wars Galaxies, more. which was actually people actually there. There's actually a the the original server is gone, but uh, uh, another group of fans actually recreated the whole game for free. Wow. Um, I, I forgot. I, I had it on my old computer, but we that, have to post that. We we have to post that link on, on our Facebook page. I gotta find oh, it, man. Yeah. It's been a long time since I used to, it. I'd love to try that. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's, it's like old school mining. It's a real old school RPG kind of, you know, like um, best way to come. The only thing comes close to it, I think, is this. Jeez, I don't even know. Um, I still. I mean, I, I, I remember uh, when it started down, people were crying. I would watch the videos on YouTube. Yeah, the actual. The if there's a video on YouTube of of the actual of the last few minutes of mm -hmm. galaxies before they shut down and there was like fireworks and people were like like just massive massive party like nobody was fighting it was just like a big good time for everybody so yeah, nobody but... was trolling anybody like, like... no actually that's just uh... <laughs> like like that story you told which is yeah. <laughs> so funny i'm <laughs> sorry but if you guys have not played uh um star wars or republic you should it's great it, it it's what it's what mass effect could have been Honestly, oh God, but yes. with it, without the combat system, obviously, I would prefer the combat system from Mass Effect. I agree. But uh, Star Wars: The Republic still has the same, um, like, kind of like turn by turn as um, turn by turn as spellcasting as as like Warcraft does. But man, like <laughs> the gameplay, the story, and the development is this the story is outstanding. And and then actually, the new updates I've been hearing are are, are amazing. I just I didn't want to. I mean, I probably could do it because i haven't really i don't have anything i'm paying monthly right now but i could probably do it but i because i got rid of uh um elder scrolls I, i'm not playing i didn't i stopped the subscription to elder scrolls so i probably could go back to sotor but i wait what's I don't know man elder scrolls? like you mean like the monthly where you get the coin and stuff mm -hmm. and get all the, the unlimited because the, the game, game is free, free. Okay, okay, yeah. I was gonna but say I, I wanted to get the upgrade with the subscription. You get the coins monthly. You get yeah. the, um, the 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 the, DLC. the the pack, all the yeah. DLCs. You get the uh, and a whole bunch of extra really cool stuff. So I ended up getting that, and I was doing that for well over a year from the original the the, the launch of the game. Yeah, I remember you, uh, Eric, got me to do that as well. And it was a lot of. I mean, the game is still probably yeah, one yeah. of the best RPG games on on a console, hands down. Probably still has to be uh, Elder Scrolls right now. Elder Scrolls Online. They actually did it right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking, for, but I will say that um, best RPG gameplay and storyline, Sotor was still outstanding. Um, just the cinematics alone were just, oh my god, so amazing. I love playing a Jedi and like doing gangster shit, like like trying to romance Trilex, even though the Jedi Order or the Jedi Code says not to. But fuck them, I live life on the edge, bro. The Jedi Code says specifically not to romance Twi'lex or just romance in general. Eh. In general, I, don't know. I mean, well, you know what? They're more actually, like guidelines. 
Okay, my favorite thing actually from Zotor was actually uh, being the Marauder and having the Twi'lek companion and torture. And you, you, had the, you had a tor- you had a torture button, oh. so you had a, you had an option whether you tortured her or you tried to romance her. And it's it was actually it was kind of interesting how you can play it out. Yeah. This sounds like a very charming game. Actually, Louis, you should get back on it and make this fun. your one uh, of your sections. Fun for all for uh, for the family. It mm-hmm. sounds like. So, oh, no, maybe I I did find my uh my my key my keypad that I need to, to sign in with, which is why I haven't played in so long. I did find it recently, and I think I lost it again in the move. But now I'll find it again, and then maybe I'll maybe I will jump in, and we're gonna add that to the uh to the list. That'd yeah, be great. Sounds good. You uh you, I, think I mean you... it's still free to play to level twenty, right? Yeah, yeah, but all my characters are level sixty or level Definitely. fifty right now. Hmm. Okay, well. Um, that was a nice tangent. I don't know what anything that we just talked about, but I love it. I love where you guys' head is at. With that being said, we're going to move on to inebriated fitness. Darflex is an exercise physiologist with a BS in exercise and sports science. Bullshit. He's a, <laughs> he is a, allegedly. He is a allegedly. certified CSCS strength conditioning coach and a CISSN sports nutritionist, sports injury specialist. And currently, an MMA weight cut specialist and nutritionist, ladies and gentlemen, Darflex. What the heart tells us now: heart rate is the speed of, of the heartbeat measured by the number of contractions of the heart per minute. The heart rate can uh, the heart rate can vary according to the body's sorry the body's physical needs, including the need to absorb oxygen and, and excrete uh, carbon dioxide. It is usually equal or close to the pulse measured in any peripheral point. Heart rates vary from person to person, but a normal range of, for adults is 60 to 100 beats per minute, according to the Mayo Clinic. Darflex, talk to us. What is the heart telling us? I'm too sick to talk about this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, let, let's, let's pick... Uh, um, f- well, this is inebriated fitness. Let's, let's approach it from a fitness standpoint. As far as health, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get into like any health conditions or any cardiovascular diseases just because, one, what I do know about it, I'm not really... You know, qualified to talk about it like that. Also, uh, I mean, if you have heart problems, go see a doctor, bro. Yes, <clears throat> cardiologist. No, but uh, when when it comes to like um, fitness and stuff, so your heart rate specifically, just your beats per minute, does say a lot. If you have a higher, like I'm generalizing here, it it could vary from very very like rare conditions. But if you have a higher heart rate or heartbeats per minute, right, on like just resting. You're out of shape. If it's I was, 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 was going to ask you about that. I was about to ask you if you were referring to the resting heart rate. Yeah. So the resting heart rate is what tells us a lot in regards to training. Um, Can you tell us exactly what a resting heart rate is? So it's just your heart rate at like true rest. The best way to get your rest heart rate is, is not, not just to put on a monitor, but is to get your heart rate when you wake up naturally without an alarm. That is your resting heart rate. If you wake up with an alarm, that's not going to be your resting heart rate because of your nervous system. It's going to be alerted and it's going to go up much exactly. higher. So a good resting heart rate, yes. I mean, I guess 60s is all right for a regular person. I, I would say low to mid-50s is, is, is optimal. That's what you want to look for. All that means is that in a minute, your heart beats a lot less, but not because your heart's weak or nothing, but it, it, it's so efficient at keeping the body going that it doesn't have to work as hard. And that's ultimately what you want because that means you have a good, healthy, strong heart. Um, I remember one time I was getting a colonoscopy. Uh, <clears throat> And they had they had me on the table. I uh, I, I, bet they, I bet they did. The uh, uh, alarm went off as, as if I was flatlining because my heart rate was too low. It was like forty three, and like for a second I was freaking out because I was sedated, but I was still awake. I'm like, "Fuck, am I dying?" <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? And I'm like, "Yeah, they had a camera up my ass, bro." I'm like, but this is when I was in pretty good shape. Now my heart rate's like. 56, bro. Which is, I mean, it's still pretty good. By, by the <coughs> um, now, what does the resting heart rate tell you? When you know your resting heart rate, that is a very good standard to have. So, if you're someone who's actively training, okay, you train, and then your goal is to recover as efficiently as possible so you can keep training. Now, if you know your resting heart rate, that is your standard. That is that is what you're going to base everything off of. Let's say you have hard workouts for a week, week, and you start feeling like crap, or you start feeling kind of sick, your immune system drops. Well, a good way to tell if you're overreached. Now, 
people confuse overtraining and overreaching. Overtraining is the long-term effect. Overreaching is the short-term effect. So just training too much, not enough recovery. Overreaching does eventually become overtraining, which you're overtrained. A good way to check if you're overtrained is simple. If you feel like crap that morning, take your heart rate. If your heart rate is higher than usual, you should probably either take, take, excuse me, <clears throat> take that day off or make it an active recovery. Go to the beach, go for a swim, go for a walk, relax, relax. That's probably, in my opinion, one of the most important things your heart rate will tell you. Yeah, my heart tells me that every day. Yeah, <laughs> that is like, if 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 you. If you truly don't know if you need a day off or not and not because you feel lazy or you're hung over like you're you're working hard if you truly don't know if you need a day off one, one morning just check your resting heart rate if, if if it's higher than usual you probably need to back off a little bit another thing that our resting heart rate will tell us is not necessarily <clears throat> the morning one but when you're training uh let's say you get your heart rate up to 60 percent, which another easy way to get your mass heart max heart rate is your you get 220 minus your age, and you get an estimate of your max heart rate. And let's say you're working at 80% of your max heart rate, so whatever that is. The amount of time, so when you get to the heart rate and the amount of time you're working now, when you work and you rest, the amount of time it takes your heart rate to come back down to, like, let's say you're at 160. And during your rest, you bring it back down to, like, 105, 95. So... How efficient your heart is to bring you back down <clears throat> to to kind of like a recovery state to where you're, you're good to go again is it, it's, it's going to tell you how efficient you are and how efficient you work. That means your heart is able to get the body and muscles, all the nutrients, and blood and oxygen it needs, and get back to kind of a stable level. That's why if if, if you notice in fights like boxing, MMA, anything Muay Thai, you you have the one minute in the corner. The physiologist, the strength and conditioning coach. Well, one of his major goals should be his heart rate variability. That means is being able to train the athlete's heart to be able to come down as low as it can within that one minute of rest because that means that you are truly recovered at least as best as you can for that one minute. Yeah. If your heart rate is constantly up, your heart just the whole time you're working, even when you're resting, you're going to gas. You're not going to last you know, that much longer. So you want to be able to, when, when you're training, another thing you want to look for is how fast your heart rate comes back down immediately after whatever whatever training time you had so like your time on versus your time off now is that something that kind of like to work on as as you progress in, in working out uh, to kind of like like almost like a standard like a okay it took me half an hour it took me an hour and a half this time around next time it's, it goes down like by 35 45 minutes it's it's like so, so like that's something that you should record and and kind of to help yes that. yes now the what you're talking is end of working i'm talking about within your rest period so this is probably within the 30 second to two minute period um but yes absolutely if your heart rate is still high up throughout the rest of the day after your uh, session either you train too hard you overtrain or you do need to work on your heart rate now you're not going to train this. I mean, it, it is going to improve by lifting weights or doing whatever routine you do, but you have to actually train for that. So what is that? It's going to be aerobic capacity, right? So it's training aerobically, which means with oxygen. And anaerobic or alactic capacity uh, or alactic power, which is like sprints. So for ex here's, here's a great example. We do a lot at the gym. We'll throw somebody in the air down or the pilot push. We'll go 10 seconds hard, like just sprint. And then they gave me 20 seconds of shadow boxing, working on their diaphragmatic breathing. So that's in through your nose, kind of creating a beer belly. So the air comes out through your belly instead of, instead of this isn't right. It should come out through your belly, not your chest. And then suck your belly in as you uh, breathe out. So that's just working on that. And that's, that, that's actually training your heart rate to come down because you give it variability of intensities. Does, does that make sense? There's obviously a lot much more to it, and it, it is case by case. Obviously, you have to understand your athlete, but just know that if you want to train heart rate, you have to actually train the heart. It's not just lifting weights or going for a swim or going for like a long distance three mile run. That's not going to really do much for. It will improve your health, obviously, you know. But you have yeah. to actually give the heart what it needs, and you have to. It is a muscle. It is a muscle, and it. it you have to make sure that you're providing the right stimulus because just like everything else in your body, the heart does get accustomed to something it's doing. So if you're not giving it what it needs, it's going to stay where it's at. All right. Cool, cool. Also, I mean, another thing that heart rate tells you, I mean, if, 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 if you got a boner, it's going to be higher. If you, <laughs> see, if, if, if you see somebody that you want to bone, 
Mm-hmm. It, it's you're gonna have a higher heart rate. Yeah. <laughs> or also, it, it goes. It, it also actually, I think it goes for both sexes of that aspect, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so in other words, so that that'll be a, a really weird way of just to, you know making sure you have proper consent is you can always check their heart rate afterwards as well. Yeah, I mean that's why nipples get hard and wieners go up because the the heart has to pump the blood to flush the tissue. It's like, wait, you said yeah. yes, but let me verify. Okay, we're good. I, I mean, <laughs> okay, the, there are studies like that. There's both psychological studies that you read the reaction time and brain waves, and obviously the heart rates based on sexual attraction with a human animal. It's pretty interesting studies. I mean, um, human sexuality is, is a pretty good field. Not my field, but it is one I did kind of delve into for uh, my general studies, and it, it was pretty interesting. It got a little weird, but it was interesting. I can only imagine. <laughs> he said it got a little weird. Yeah, because right. like, people that took it were weird. Oh, of course, of course, of course. All right, well, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, if you want more fitness and nutrition tips or that sweet, sweet UFC post, then follow him on his Instagram. That's Darflex, D-A-R-T-H underscore F-L-E-X-X. We're going to move on to Anime and Animation Invasion, Love, Death, Robots, Part 8, Good Hunting Review. The son of a spirit hunter forges a bond with a shape-shifting, I don't know how to pronounce that, Huli Jin. It's Huli. Is it Huli or Huli? Huli. Huli Jin. Huli Jin. Huli Jin. So we're going to do the usual thing. Which is a fox spirit, by the way. So we're more than halfway done. It is uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Darflex, if you if you please, the good of good hunting. The good for this for me is going to be the setting of the of the. Uh, I mean the plot, yeah, but like like the setting. The the setting has this kind of like steampunk. Uh, not steampunk. Steampunk. Right, <laughs> steampunk. Gotcha. Yeah, like this this steampunk Probably podcast. Miyazaki kind of look to it, man. I thought it, I thought it was pretty great. Like it reminded me of watching like those old like Spirited Away movies and yeah. Well, it was stuff. like it, yeah, it was like that at first until it did, did its massive time jump and what I would consider. No. Was, okay, actually, that was still, a time like, jump. Yeah, yeah it, was. It, it was. I mean, it wasn't that massive though. It was like right, maybe but but, but but when it's it's they started out in in like the the the. Like a like like the old school Japanese setting, and they jumped into some neo neotopia well, at the end in one generation. That's not realistic. So I it mean, felt like a massive time jump. From somewhat okay. it is, yeah, somewhat it is. If if you look at the uh, when like the the samurais ended in in Japan, it's because the Western influence came in. Now I'm not saying it's like super technology to that, but they went from pretty much nomadic people to like Westernized modern people. It it's it's their spelling because obviously it's not Earth. Or, right. Maybe if it is, but it's not like right. it's fantasy. Right. It's fantasy. So it, that's what it is. It's just it's, it's a Western influence came to nomadic people. That's why we saw such a huge jump. I'm sure that existed already in the world. No, but actually, the, the whole thing is like you know, the last samurai movie itself is actually a perfect example of it. It was a modern, modernized society, modernized nations, but they still had the traditional Japanese villages. You know, so maybe they actually he came he came from one of those traditional Japanese villages that ended up you know then afterwards to protect you know the the. the I, spirit, I hear you. He, I he hear moved. you. I mean, for me, the good was, uh, you know, I liked the animation. I, I liked that, too, of course. <laughs> I, I, I was waiting for it. I was waiting we always for love it. Titties. We always love titties. Uh, no, yeah, it was, it was, no. I, mean, I liked the animation. I, I was actually semi-attracted to, to the um, to the spirits. So they slamming. Yeah, you were. Slamming, yeah, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, wow. you were. So, you know, I didn't the, know that. The, I uh, quick question, though. Mom or daughter? Both. Both. Yeah, okay. Can somebody Photoshop Vibe with one of those? I, by all means. And I'll post it. Proudly. Oh my god, yes, yes. I I Proudly. Photoshop, Photoshop well, challenge. Also, okay. please make Vibe a furry. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I, I'm all I'm all I'm all game for I know I was a furry, but uh Garbanzo, the good. Uh good. I honestly it's the 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 storyline, the interaction between like just the uh, you know, the whole like why are you hunting us kind of situation and how how perception uh, that, that that just the whole storyline itself, the animation, and of course, it was just really cool to see uh, nipples in a cartoon. I, of course, no, I agree. Always. I agree. I mean, at first, it, you know, it's oh, they're the, they're the you know the the gin or the evil ones, but then they, if we come to find out that no, it's 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 the you know the human beings become infatuated with the gin, and it was yep. it was kind of interesting, like like how they twisted it like that. Because at first, I'm like, yeah, yeah, kill him, kill him, kill him. Like the fight scene was the was the bomb. Yeah. Okay. The samurai sword scene was the bomb. When he took out the mother, spoiler alert, that shit was... I was like, oh, fuck! Yeah, I was not expecting I that. Felt. I was like, damn. It broke my heart, though, man, because like I was like, ouch. 
Yeah, yeah, because it was, it was gruesome, though. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man. So I like that. Uh, the Bad, Flex. The Bad. Hmm. I, I actually, honestly, I can't. It, it, it seems like it's going to be... There was only one bad, and that was the thing that Dracula won for me, but I think uh, there... I just... It's hard to find a bad for these, these episodes. They, they've been pretty solid, man. Okay. So uh, Garbanzo, the bad. Um, honestly, I think for me, it's just like I... I uh, it it, it kind of gave me a little bit of that, that taste of the steampunk world, and I really wanted to see where they would go with that. Um, I mean, I, obviously, the, the ending of the of the short, but like I could really see. Um, I would I would like to see a lot more of that. Like I w- actually, um, I think that's I think that's all our consensus. Most of these episodes were like we want yeah, to see more. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, but I I could definitely see a whole movie based on this one. I mean, they made a, a, a steampunk Japanese a- anime. I think it was called Steam Boy, mm-hmm. and I actually own it. It was fantastic. It was very very well done. So I, I again just. I'm, and I, and I kind of dig the steampunk aspect. That was actually, but I want more. Um, fantastic. The bad for me again. I it's that time jump. Uh, it it I felt like I was watching two different uh, shorts in the same short. It it I I I get what you're saying, Flex. You're right. It's it's their own world. Time can move by faster. Things can evolve faster. But I'm just like, I mean, we started off with something very rural, and then bam, we're in like. You know, Tokyo, Tokyo Hatton. Like I was like, where, where did this happen? How did this happen like that? And it, it kind of threw me off because the two settings they didn't mesh in the same. They didn't feel like they were in the same story. It felt so like that happened to China, though. Huh? That happened to China. But not not so not so fast. You yeah. know, you, were, yeah. you have to understand. No, uh, no. So within twenty they, years. Not, within twenty yeah. years, they, they had big bustling cities. Yes, twenty years. Yes, they, they did. I got a fact. I got a fact to check that Dude. because. It was a boy, the boy, the China, it, not it Japan, looked, China, China, not Japan. Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta fact check that because, because when I saw it, the boy was a little boy and he was only what in his early 20s, it had to be no more than 10 15 years between him being a boy and him being a young man when he arrives at the city. I'm like, how did that happen in, 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 in such a short time? I don't care how fast you're building, you don't build something like that with that, with that Remember, level of. China had that kind of atmosphere still uh-huh. back in the 19 th- 1920s and 1930s. But you're, so you're but what you're saying is that you're assuming that 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 those two things coexisted like that. I don't, I don't it didn't feel like that. It's possible, you know, just like we have rural areas in in in, um, in, in, in United States, and you can assume that that's how most of the United States looks. But I don't know. It just felt like two different settings to me. It felt like Japan, and then like 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 like. Neo, uh, like like San Francisco from from uh, Big Hero Six, <laughs> like that's what I was. I was, I was like, what did I, did I stumble into? That's it the only thing like I got. Neo Tokyo, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. So, but the whole thing is it. Uh, but if you if you look at the whole steampunk aspect, the the steampunk era is supposed to be like 40s and 50s. So right. if it was, it, you know, back in the 1920s, 1930s, that's you know, they even had you know that kind of thing. robotics. They had advanced robotics. Let's be real. Hey, technically speaking, it's not steam. So advanced, it's a steam. Robotics. Steampunk robotics again. The idea. Behind I don't. Steampunk they didn't turn the. the they didn't era. turn the fox into a steam. She was a steam steam engine. No, she wasn't. Yeah, yeah she oh, was. Yeah. Maybe I need well, to re- re- remember that right he turned around and like. Tsh- you know what? You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Lonsta, remember steampunk. Yeah. The whole idea yeah. between steampunk is supposed to be like the 30s, 40s, and 50s era. Actually, not even the 50s. 50s is going way too far. We're talking okay. like 20s, 30s, and thir- 20s and 30s. All right. Well, the ugly gentleman, Darth Lex. Um. So the whole the whole rape part. Um, I don't think that's likely because I mean that's something that's very true. We should be able to see it. I, I I think they could they could have done a little bit better, you know. Okay. Like being that it's Netflix, there's really no FCC to exactly. It's not no regulation. I, I just think it could have been a little bit more brutal, maybe a little bit more bloodier, you know. Well, I think they were they were trying to uh, be t- a little tasteful with it, a little yeah, I, or a little I, reserved, I, I think, maybe. I I think they kind of wanted to try, make the severity of it without. Being as gruesome as they could. I mean, I get that. I mean, yeah, I do. And I guess this isn't a negative. I just wanted more gruesomeness. Right. You wanted more realism. You wanted more realism, pretty yeah. much. But I mean, they delivered beautifully. So yeah, honestly, I can't complain. Garbanzo. Uh, actually, for me, I don't have an ugly at all. Neither do I. Neither do I. So that's it, uh, guys. That is um, oops, I'm that is uh, Love Death Robots Part Eight. Good hunting. If you guys have seen um. Any of these episodes or the ones we just reviewed, by all means, send us an email. We'd love to read your review on mm-hmm. on air. We're almost done, guys. After that, then that's the segment is gone. So, you Fake know, come news. on now. 
Send, right? Send, send, us, send us your information we, or, or your comments. We'd love to hear it. We're going to move on to Gadgets R Us. Apple kills off iTunes after 18 years. Now, that threw me off. I'm like, iTunes. Me too. When you thought Apple, you thought iTunes. This article comes yeah. from Yahoo.com. Um, Apple kills off its iTunes music uh, management software after nearly two decades, marking uh, a major shift in its software. The software was originally introduced in 2009 by Steve Jobs as a way to load songs onto your new iPod. Uh, yeah. It will be replaced by, by separate apps for music, video, and podcasts for PC, the company reveals in its Worldwide Developers Conference. Yeah, the, but, update will uh, come in, the update will sorry, come in yeah. Apple's upcoming Mac uh, OS 10.15 software update. Guys, how do you feel about this? That's our childhood right there. Honestly, honestly, man, I never read any of these fucking Gadgets R Us things, but when I saw this, I'm like, oh, man, I got to read this. Uh, At least he's so, honest. Yeah, I mean, like, I read some of them, but, like, um, so... <laughs> I mean, I have Apple Music, so I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah, and so do I. The thing is that I, 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 uh, I, 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 I have spent thousands of dollars over the last eighteen years on iTunes. So for me, it's kind of it's, it's bittersweet, man. Yeah, it's like I mean, as, as long as they replace what they're removing, I'm, I'm okay with it. Like yeah, as but, long I mean, as but, not... but, they're, but they're going from one app, one one art to three different apps. How do you feel about that? You were able to listen to your music, watch your stuff, and your podcast all in one thing. Now they're, they're separating my into three. My phone, it's easier because right now to watch my movies on my phone that I have that I bought, I have to go into iTunes, mm -hmm. go into downloads, go into movies to watch, to listen to my podcast. I go to the right. podcast app. Okay. Yeah, same here. So honestly, as, as long as I keep everything I pay for, it, I don't really care because I'm already going to different apps to you know get okay. my content. Yeah, they, they already have for the for, for videos. They already have us going to the TV app, which then oh, they, you oh, know they. Do. they yeah, they have. A, I don't use iTunes TV. very much, so I was. I was sure. Yeah, now they have the now they have the TV app for 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 basically. Uh, you can actually it, it links up with your with your current cable provider and everything. It's actually kind of cool, um, and does and does all the linking up for you. Uh, but the fact is that they already have music separate. They already have um, the oh, TV so separate. Oh, so it's already, already there. Because I mean, I haven't, yeah. on I haven't really used phones, I haven't yeah. really used iTunes since I used to like pay for the seasons the subscription the uh, seasons of, of smallville that's like the last time i really uh used yeah that's it it's, it's so, like free yeah, oh, yeah, yeah the only so. thing is that when I, how am i getting my ringtones man because that's how i used to get my ringtones dude rip them what do you mean <laughs> oh no I, I i i i've i've actually bought two or three ringtones over the years i've only bought one and that's the uh lord of the rings shire theme oh that's a good one though <laughs> That's it. That's actually my main ringtone right now. <laughs> Allegedly. All right. So <laughs> Samsung's new Note 7 is essentially a MacBook, a MacBook Pro with Windows and more ports. This article comes from finance.yahoo.com. Samsung has a couple of new laptops out. The Note 7 is 13 inches. The Note 7 yeah, That's inches. what she said. <laughs> All right? yeah. And the Note 7 Force. That's exactly what she said. The first Forced. two are run on a uh, the, the run-of-the-mill business laptops which look very much like the apple macbook pros while the okay. seven force has an all-black design and is a bit more powerful and aims at creators i gotta check that one out while copying apple's design and improving certain shortcomings uh can be a good tactic you want to get to look at these uh specs more so i actually checked out these specs and um i mean i haven't used a windows laptop for my productions in a very very long time move over to mac haven't gone over but for the force that looks looks promising i, I mean it's making me really want to consider investing in that because i'm moving what you guys may want to know is that is that i'm trying to move on into, into mobile editing where i can edit on the go and not have to sit here and edit this will be my main one but just getting a a, a flash so i'm looking i'm actually in, in, in shopping around for a good laptop to be my mobile editing suite that can last me for several years that can take with me so it'll be my, my laptop my camera and go with me and adjust the footage kind of we, we had a test run about of that uh in chicago kind of you see how we did, kind of did it in chicago yeah we, we could do the thing we adjusted the footage to the laptop the difference is we just put on my flash drive i want to do something similar i want to be able to go out there record ingest it into my laptop and if, and if i can on site start editing on site uh, or at least rearranging on site. So that's what I'm. Yeah, that'd at. be great. At least you so, know, put our, our like our the, our our header and 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 footer. Exactly. So, uh, but but it, the force looks pretty pretty good. I, I like what I see here. Um, also looks pretty. That it does. It it's true. It look it looks just like 
a MacBook Pro. It does. It looks exactly like the same colors, same Just generic. black. Except for the Force. The Force is mm, it's a powerhouse. So yes, the Force is strong with this laptop. But I'll let you guys know if I actually end up, end up buying it. I'm going to try and go to maybe the Best Buy or something to play with it, as she said. And, mm-hmm. and go from there. So we're going to move on to Open Mic. Open Mic. Okay. <laughs> Marvel and talks with Keanu Reeves to join the Eternals. This article comes from Yahoo.com. Listen, guys, I was really, really, really tired to all these articles on Yahoo.com. Sorry. Next time I was out diversified. Okay, um, so the right. Eternals is has already has an impressive lineup of stars signed up, and Keanu Reeves could soon be the latest. The John Wick star is reportedly in negotiations to appear in Marvel's new movie, which uh, centers on a group of immortal beings who possess godlike abilities. Uh, having been created by cosmic deities, the Celestials. So, uh, according to MCU Cosmic, uh, the talks are still in the early develop er, are still early for Reeves and Marvel, but a for a foyer into the superhero genre would be a long time coming for the action star. The actor would be would be joining Angelina Jolie and Richard Madden uh, for the film, and he's directed by Chloe Zhao, written by Matthew and Ryan Frepo. Frepo, Frepo. What do you guys think? Uh, <laughs> Do we want John Wick in the MCU, and what is he going to play? My my question is, is this going to be live action or animated? Live action. Uh, Okay, so obviously he's not going to be Hercules, the gay character. I think he would have made a great gay character. Um, (laughs) I... No, I think he would. I think he would. Not, not because he's, uh, he's a man's man. But I'm saying his 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 caliber of acting is so good that he can absolutely mm-hmm. pull it off. Um, I do. I, I mean, I I love me some Keanu Reeves. I mean, I I don't I don't think he has much range. I don't know what you're talking about when you say caliber. I mean, he's 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 uh, formidable. He can do some stunts. He's you know he's got he's got the. Whatever. Have you seen Tai Chi Man? No. He well, has really good that's... indie movies. Now. It's actually one of the only movies you see. Bad guy. From what I've seen, he has no range when it comes to acting. So, but I don't, I don't know, man. I, uh... I don't know. Like, well, from... here's the thing: is, it wouldn't be his first in co- technically because, um, for my, is you know, the whole thing is, from my understanding, uh, Forty Seven Ronin, um, was actually yeah. based off a graphic novel. It was. Yeah. Okay. So this is, wouldn't be his first foray into in, into in, into comics, but I think it's just his first. For I, guess, I, guess, I guess I guess maybe mainstream comics. I guess maybe I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess like, I guess. You know, I mean, there, but... It's also Scanner Darkly, man. That, that was another fantastic. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. You know, I never saw that. I I, I meant to uh, see dude, it. I, ha- I, I have the DVD. I, ha- I have the DVD. It was good. Oh, you know. Oh, maybe you should invite some people over. Know. And, you know, for for, for a let's give night. him a chance, bro. I mean. Oh no, no, I'm not saying I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all because he's killing it in John Wick. Even I've never seen a single John Wick one, but oh, it's, it's just that whole. He doesn't. Have, I just don't think he has the acting range. You know, not to say that he can't play a Marvel character. Of course, you know, anybody can play I mean, a Marvel character. That's but, true. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, look at Captain Marvel. But oh, he, I mean, too soon. He went from like Bill and Ted to like John Wick. I mean, that's. Well, yeah, yeah. That's that. I mean, and, if you look at mathematically, the range in that is pretty. And, and not for nothing, just as as a human being, he he actually is a, is, is is an amazing human being. If you got to see what what he's, what he's done, oh, I didn't know, I didn't life. know you, I didn't know you do him personally, Dude, Garbanzo. Not you know? personally, but I, I follow his his the philo- the philanthropic works. Okay. You know who he should be? He should be the next Ghost Rider, and he should use his own motorcycles because you know he makes his own motorcycles, right? Oh yes, he I does. Did know, I did not yeah. know that. Uh, no, I want, I want, I want a motorcycle from him. That there, day. dude, there, there are nice. Like, if you want to be like a total, like not those fags with the crotch rockets, those fucking Puerto Ricans, but like, and not like like the hogs, but like you know, like 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 a man's man, <laughs> like a man's motorcycle, like a cruiser. <laughs> That's what he makes, bro. <laughs> That's what he makes, bro. Look, let's let let's all let's get this out. Look, let's just put it on the table. Crotch rockets are gay. And if you are at a chopper this, that's like, uh, describe, super loud, you're just describe, a douchebag. Describe. <laughs> okay. Describe a crotch rocket. I I I don't know what we're talking about here. Oh, uh, so, the ones that go, the ones that they, the ones that actually when you when you rev the engine, it says what kind of bike it is, like Yamaha or like Honda. That's that's kind yeah. of a crotch rocket. It's oh. the one that's really slick, and the guy wears like like a not a real leather, a pleather jacket. He's got like this really fruity <laughs> helmet on. Uh, his, his eyebrows are done, and he's like going like 120 miles on a highway, listening to Daddy Yankee's Gasolina. 
Is that's that what a crotch rocket okay, is. That's it. I'm oh, done. Oh my god. I, okay, I, now hold on. Now switch that out with a a very well proportioned Colombian female. And Flex, do you have still have the same problem with it? I mean, the guys obviously haven't heat that that's a fag hag. Like if you're on a crotch rocket, you're a fag no matter what, bro. So and listen, I'm not here trying to offend anybody. I don't mean it. Give me one second. <laughs> right, I, I think I think the I think Leah was offended by it. Yeah. Oh, I, I think she's Puerto Rican, but um, <laughs> she <laughs> might be. Allegedly. But yeah, I mean, what? Because you have a like plastic woman on on your motorcycle that that doesn't make you a douche. Come on, come on, you bro, you do your eyebrows and wear Puma sneakers and like jeans that are way too tight for you, and listen to mumble rap. <laughs> Come on, with a with a with a with a, with a what's it called with a Ferragamo belt that. You know. <laughs> okay, and with that no. <laughs> God, why? See, I can't know. See, this is what happens. You can't. I get involved, and then I I'm I'm the good one here. I'm the I, good one. I no, 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 I laugh. I just laugh. I don't. The ever, only I thing I, I can I can help is for these crash market owners that that they get into an actual ac- accident and the bump. Helps your testicles drop so they can stop being little bitches. And with that being said, <laughs> we're moving on to Avengers Endgame directors developing animated Magic the Gathering series. At Ooh, Netflix. I'm down for this. So well, I, I'm I, so I, down. I picked this because I know one of you guys are into these kind of things. I don't remember which one. In new. Oh, oh, I, 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 oh okay, there you go. I, I play Magic. The, I used to play Magic the Gathering all the time, dude. Uh, yeah, that, I, I, I was I you? was that kid. I was that kid in middle school with like my little deck in my backpack that I wouldn't tell nobody about. But if I see somebody else playing, I'd be back. like, he had, a, "He had a dick in his backpack, yeah." And Whatever. he whipped it out when nobody was looking. Right. So we we'll see when somebody else whips out what's up whips out their deck deck. Um, I you know you got to be like, "So you up is for your, a game? Is your deck bigger than my deck?" I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, are you, oh, you're running a Death and Fire deck." Ooh, Ooh. yeah. P Fire. Show you, show you my deck. I'll, I'll show you my deck. <laughs> All right. In new shorter supercharge, anyone who has the, at least dabbled in the mystic arts of Magic the Gathering, Avengers directors Joe and Anthony Russo will be de- developing a new animated series for the streaming platform based on the popular Wizards and Coast Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's the I'm they're, talking. They're, they're excited. Who's 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 attacking? It's Nevi. He arrived, didn't he? No. <laughs> Based on the popular Wizards of the of the Coast fantasy franchise, uh, there will there have been previous attempts to bring Magic uh, to the movie theaters, but this will be the first time the franchise has been, has been adapted to the screen in the franchise's nearly twenty five years history. The Russos um, will executive produce the series and oversee the creation of all new storylines that will expand the stories of the Planeswalkers, which are Ooh. the Magic's uh, unique Magic wielding heroes and villains. As they contend with stakes larger than the one. It sounds like like a like a it's got like a, a Game of Thrones feel. Uh, Star Wars Rebels executive producer writer uh, Henry Gilroy okay. will co-write and co-showrun the Magic ser- series with Jose Molina, the executive producer of Amazon's First The Tick, and Mar- oh, Marvel's Marvel agent Car- Carter. Carter. All right, so since this is your thing, Garbazo, how do you feel about this? What do you what do you hope for this series? Um, dude, there's a lot of history, and the whole thing is that, like, um, there's a lot of different, uh, different av- avenues that can really go, because technically the, the, the whole game is based upon, uh, different elements. You have different, you know, different types of cards. You have the black cards, are basically the death cards, the decromancy. You have the fire cards, the red one. You have the earth, you know, green, water, blue, the celestial oh are, are white. And the whole thing is depending on certain 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 ones are are, are stronger than others depending on, on certain combinations that actually work towards you you know that work with each other. And I just really want to see kind of how where they kind of go with that. Are they going to deal with like five different kingdoms, or are they going to go with like you know people who kind of mix and match? And and it, I I don't know. It's just I really want to. I'm kind of curious on, on how they're going to do it. The plane walkers. Are they going to have like different storylines about certain heroes? Are they going to bring heroes that they bring in in some of the card games? Are they going to bring them to life? And how is it going to happen? And but it, it's there's a lot of really cool stuff that they can go down with this 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 uh this tunnel. So as long as they do it right the first time, they this this may last a while. And you said the celestial or what? White the white cards. They're white. Do they have <laughs> power? 
they 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 all they all have power, sir. White Different power. types what of power. White power. power. <laughs> See, maybe maybe it's maybe it's this okay, podcast still giving this me the, is, the, flag. Whole, the whole the whole the, the, the worst part is that there's actually a a uh, you can actually. This sounds horrible, but it's they're called power decks, which are basically heavily offensive decks. Yeah, so I bet, I bet so. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm all of you. So yes, they, they there are such thing as black power decks and white power decks. There are yeah, yeah. green power decks, red power decks. Yeah, oh, so but this, not in the same this, context. This is power Rangers, okay. This is power which is the superior uh, one though? Which, which one? Actually, no single deck can beat an, 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 another one directly. <laughs> So it's actually the best. The best kind of deck is to have a combination. Good save. Okay. Good save. Good one. Good one. Good one. All right. We're gonna briefly. Rainbow. We're gonna briefly touch on Robert Pat- Patterson moving forward as the new Batman. So that's said. Um, the the, the um, article that I had is not loading, but we already talked about this last week. So I don't really have much more to say besides what, based upon the. Um, the article that Squeezy Bits gave us last week where they said that the studios didn't understand why Heath Ledger was a Joker because we didn't understand the kind of Joker that they were, that they were casting for. That, that Robert Patterson, the reason why we don't we may not be able to understand that is because we don't understand the character that's being portrayed in this movie. Would that Does that still, now, you know, what, a week later, does this hold true for you guys? Are you guys still um, willing to see what, where this goes? I mean, honestly... I don't really care about anything that's DC as far as the cinematic world goes, unless it's Jason Momoa. So that's my answer to whatever, anything else. Oh, okay, Garbanzo. Uh, you know what? I, I didn't really get a chance on last week's episode to kind of chime in on this, but uh, on my part, I'm actually okay with Patterson. Why? Uh, being, being Batman. Um, How? Bat- How Bat- do I? Bat- Here's the thing. Is it has, Pat- Patterson has done some, besides besides... The 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 twinkly vampire mm-hmm. shit movie, mm-hmm. the yeah. whatever movie yeah. that was. Vampire shit. Um, there's I mean there's there's been other I mean I've done I, I did a little research and I, I I watched him in some other movies and he does he, he can play a grittier you know you know uh, a sunken role so I mean uh, he can play a little, a little bit more uh, you know unlike his co-star in those in, in said movies which was she she had no emotion. Um, the mouth beater. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to make it very clear that that uh, yeah, Ray did the same thing in Force Awakens. She never closed her mouth in most of the scenes. So I'm just making it very clear. Yeah, but she's hotter. Yeah, but yeah. And, and, she and is. Also, well, she, also, she had the force in her mouth. You forced what in her mouth? No, nothing. nothing. She had the force. Family podcast. So the, uh, the so my big thing my so my point is like I I, I would kind of see where it kind of go I mean it can't it can't be any worse than like you know I don't know uh, Batman versus Superman or um, don't say that because it absolutely can't be worse yeah I, hey, you're right it could be Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel Wonder Woman was a good movie so really I don't know what you're talking about best. I liked Wonder Woman a lot I enjoyed Wonder Woman it was uh, one it made, it made me fall in love with, with Gal Gadot and really she's yes. amazing. She, 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 you don't know. No, no, I mean, like, I didn't need Wonder Woman to. I mean, no, 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 to be attracted to Gal Gadot, no, but to fall in love with her, the way she portrayed her character, she did it well. I I left that movie with a super crush on her. It was, it was, it was, it was so cute. Like, I was like, wow, that's a woman I want to take home, uh, to to, to my mother. That's a woman I I want to beat the shit out of, out of, uh, people that bug me. That's what I'm talking about. Um, no, no, that's what yeah, I like. You, I, 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 I can, I can actually see you do that. Like, right. just like go to a bar with her. Yeah, and, and, and she was your date, and then I like, literally start a fight, and then just be like, "Babe, take care of this." Absolutely, absolutely, uh, absolutely. I'd stick her on all my enemies. I guess so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get past the first 15 minutes of that movie. Then, to, to to talk. And, and that trench scene. I'm sorry, that trench scene is powerful as shit. Yeah, that really is. So one where they're all really getting is. shot. Like all, yes. all the girls are getting shot with the bullets. No, no, no. no the trench scene when she's in the trench with with the guys and and uh, you know, no spoiler intended. They told uh, her they're women dying. It's called No Man's Land, and it's, that's what it's literally called. It's no man's land because everybody's gonna die out there. But she's also not a man, and she walks out there and she, and she takes it, and she inspires the men to go out there and, and help her. That and scene actually, was oh, it, it was very well done. No, no, honestly, that was it's funny because the chemicals should have killed her, not the bullets. That's why it's no man's land. 
Right, understood. But she's above that all, you know. No, she no, can... no, she's not. She can yeah. take a shot. No, she can what? Take a shot of what? She she can take a shot. You saw her, all her bitches get fucking gunned down at the beach by like men. Right, but they were they weren't. She was actually uh, she's actually half god. They weren't. So yeah, was, why doesn't was, she not use her bracelets without the bullets and use her face? Because she didn't know that she wasn't half god until like until I think the end of the movies when they finally said you're the god killer. You're the one who has that power. Um, has, has, has she tried taking a bullet? I don't know. Uh, sure. I I think she has taken a bullet in the comics. In the movies, though. Oh, I don't not know. yet. I think, I Eventually, think, she will. I'm pretty sure taking a bullet is like somebody poking you really hard and fast. That's kind of annoying. You don't want to get hit by a bullet. You know, you want to. You'll still block it if you can. Yeah, she. No, the whole thing is that she. She. Uh, she. Uh, you know, unlike Superman, you know, she can fly like Superman. She can. You know, she's a strong, but she can. She. She is not impenetrable. <laughs> Didn't Batman so, penetrate? You know that? what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. After <laughs> I said it, I could. I was like, I feel like I family podcast. <laughs> All right, it's so, not impervious to God. You know what? I can't. There's no way for me how, to say that you're not going to be heck, about it. How the heck do we go from Robert Pattinson's Batman to Gal Gadot? Okay, because okay. that's how boring the DC universe is, bro. Understood. Except for Aquaman. Aquaman was was look. Aquaman was was perfectly adequate. It was nothing special about Aquaman. Come on. This, honestly, my only infatuation with Aquaman is he's one more. Yeah, we know. My, my yeah, my my. That's that's man. Yeah. All right, we're gonna move on to my uh, day, but. Uh, Evan Peters is sad that Quicksilver's big storyline uh, will be left unresolved. Uh, this article comes from Yahoo.com slash entertainment. Um, ever since Evan Peters was introduced as Quicksilver, the X-Men franchise has teased his relationship with Magneto, but unfortunately it won't get resolved in Dark Phoenix. I guess, is that a spoiler? Anyway, uh, fans of the film franchise and comic books will know that uh, Peters' super speed mutant is a biological son of Michael Fassbender's Magneto, and despite this storyline being touched on in Apocalypse, that is completely left out of the latest movie. Yep, definitely a spoiler. So, I mean, I didn't really care much for this storyline. I thought it was funny in first class when he's like, you know, I, you know, I, I knew my, my mom knew a guy who could mess with metal. But um, I don't even know why they even teased it in Apocalypse and didn't, didn't resolve it in Apocalypse. They could have used that moment to turn Magneto around. So I never understood what they were holding it back for. What what, what was this? What was the point of that? But I, I think do you guys care? Because, because the whole thing is that um, I like that. Well, not, not, I mean, honestly, part of me doesn't really care in the aspect because um, I, 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 I'm still waiting to see how they're going to incorporate the X Men, and they may retcon a lot of the stuff, anyways. You mean um, incorporate the X Men into the MCU? Yeah. Oh, but they're not gonna. These actors are gone. They're gonna be yeah, gonna that's, my, that's that's kind of my point. Like the whole like Fox has done. I I'm, I Fox has already gone to, down this rabbit hole that, that I'm not really happy with to begin with. X Men has been okay, enjoyable, and fun to watch. But my okay, I'm, honestly speaking, Michael Fassbender as as Magneto was probably one of the better choices. Oh, I absolutely. just liked it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, but the fact of the matter is that you know Quicksilver actually when he finds out about Magneto he. Actually goes to go becomes a bad guy, so that may be the reason why they haven't done it because they want to keep Quicksilver as oh he's still a good guy for right now. So well, I don't we know. don't. I mean, they're not beho- behoven, beholden to the comics. I mean, of course you know they they, they take fat liberties. I think that they, I mean sure. I don't know what the point of, of holding liberties. on to it, but but I'm saying that if there was any time to resolve that would have been to resolve it in an apocalypse. You still have family. Well, here I am. I still have family. I'm your family. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I I couldn't care less. But well, it mean, is kind of annoying. It could be worse. They could have killed them off in Age of Ultron. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they they had to kill them off because they knew that their hey, that that next was quick was gonna be better than the. Did, did they, we they, they, ever they, figure they, out why um, Wanda lost her accent throughout the Avengers movies? Uh, it's it's, it's the same affliction that happened to Halle Berry's uh, Storm uh, in the original X Men movies. It's it's a rare affliction where. Where it's, as it's an X-Men. It's, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a, a comic book movie affliction. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. So, so that's that's what happened to it. Same, same, same situation. So, so actually, believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, there is some continuity and some uh, between the X-Men franchise and um, and the MCU because of of the uh, the the loss of <laughs> accent Accents. syndrome. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get into that. It's it's definitely a mutant gene issue. Uh, we're gonna move on to. Wolverine cut from Dark Phoenix storyline because age gap with Jean Grey. Ah, uh, yes. Um, what? That makes no is- sense. Yeah, she's of age. Also, doesn't matter if it was like the older Green Jay from the 
uh, sorry, Jean Grey from the X Men movies because isn't Wolverine like almost a hundred years old? Like pretty, pretty old. He's been through like pretty pretty major wars. Well, All right. it says they here get, that. Okay. Uh-huh. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, yeah, you go. Like, no, you by all means. No, the whole thing is that they can make, you know, Professor X look a lot younger when, it, 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 with with CGI, but they're, they 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 don't want to remove a few wrinkles off off his face. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what what, what it is, but it says here that, that that's the romance between uh, Logan and Logan Wolverine and Jean Grey, which saw the former fall hard uh, for the latter and have his heart broken when she became Dark Phoenix. Uh, we've only ever seen Logan's love for Jean Grey play out in the original X Men trilogy. The Wolverine uh, through Jackman and uh, was it? From a, a fam- Fam-K, 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 Fam-K Jansen, yeah. who's slamming hot, uh, or was slamming hot? Was it? Saw, he's not. Uh, uh, but this storyline uh, was put on hold when Sophie Turner took over the younger version of the redhead telepath. Simon Pegg, who wrote and directed Dark Phoenix, explained that Rolling Stone why he decided against con- uh, continuing that romance storyline. Um, if you know the Dark Phoenix story, you want you'd want to what do you do it? You'd want to really service the love story between Logan and Jean. And I think that the notion of Hugh Jackman, as great as he is, uh, looks for his age and Sophie Turner, it didn't sit well with me or anyone else. Um, so oh, what I really okay, wanted so, to do was show okay, oh, it, uh, see, that's the thing that's so annoying because if, if it was an older if it was an older woman with a younger man, people would be like, oh, woman empowerment. <laughs> Uh, yes, but the, oh, I agree, the matter I agree. Is, but the fact of the matter is that Logan was born in 1800 and change. So the True. fact of the matter is like really the, the 10, 15 years is not that big of a difference. The man appears to be in his 40s, but he's actually over 100 years old. Yeah, yeah she's over 18. Now, explain to me this. There are thousands and thousands of women who date older men because they prefer, they prefer having someone who maybe they th- they see as more of a, 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 a uh, who has a maturity level that ma- ra- matches theirs a little bit better because right, probably, and yeah, it's a, it's a known probably. fact and, well not just that it's also a known fact besides that as well there's also a known fact that women do mature a, a little faster than men um and you know we allegedly you know, allegedly alleged, I still allegedly, don't buy that okay, crap, but allegedly I mean the majority I mean honestly speaking I mean well I I can't say. It. I mean, I'm still that's a freaking right. twelve yeah, year old yeah, sometimes, yeah. so whatever. I know that's right. Shoot. Um, well, I, I mean, I don't really know the comic story of it. I only know that Last Stand. I guess that, and that maybe that explains why the Last Stand was the Last Stand uh, with with them too. But um, I don't think it was necessary. You know, the, he had his little cameo in in um, which one was that? Apocalypse? It was a it was Apocalypse, right? Days of Future's Past. Oh, yeah, it was Apocalypse. Oh. When it was Apocalypse. He had his little freedom. cameo was there, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, he was in Apocalypse real quick. He was weapon weapon um weapon X in there. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't really care. I mean, I don't really follow the the comics like that. Uh, if you guys care, by all means, email us if you've seen the movie. Uh, we're gonna watch it next week and see if it holds up. Anyway, I think anything is better than Last Stand's Phoenix uh, Dark Phoenix Saga. So. I'm down. So. Yeah, we'll see. You know the one good thing I like about Last Stand what? is when that uh, that, that cat bitch was running through the uh, walls, and she's running from the juggernaut, and then he goes like, "I'm the juggernaut, bitch!" Like from from that old like voiceover from the black dudes from from like the early 2000s. <laughs> yes. That? Yeah. Yes. Boy, I'm the so you juggernaut. like that. But everybody else makes fun of that scene. It's really Katie, funny that like Well, scene. because it's it's that's what it was. It was like it was done on purpose, bro. Oh. Yeah, it, it was a nice little homage to 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 uh, to, to fans. You know what I'm saying? Now, now I will I will say this though. Uh, so. I, I I would really like to see a they 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 really kind of keep um, the same mutants over and over again. I would not have a problem with them introducing uh, a a a, a, new, a colossus again. Or a or or, or, or gambit. Or, well, gambit. I'm still I'm still waiting for my Tatum. I'm still waiting for for Tatum to yeah, take that take over that role, man. Uh, let's get someone else. Let's get uh, Jacob from Twilight. <laughs> oh oh, uh, Taylor Lautner. Yeah. Dude, Taylor Taylor Lautner's yeah. actually. Uh, I, thought Taylor, I, thought, I thought I thought Taylor Lautner gained weight. He's not that. He's oh, not ripped he's anymore. He gained like a hundred pounds. Yeah, oh. but yeah, but I'm, but it, with his martial arts background, I'm sure he can get back to where he has to be. True, true. Final thoughts, gentlemen. He, 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 he is an amazing martial artist, by the way. I it's, didn't know that. 
Yeah. All I ever, all I ever knew is that he took his shirt off and turned into a wolf. Well, he was also Shark Boy. Yep. Was he? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! Stuff. I never watched. I never watched any of those Shark Boy, Lover Boy, Lover Girl things. I think I aged out of that too quickly. All right. So final well, thoughts, gentlemen, before we wrap this up. Um, this was nice. Um, one of the shortest episodes we've had in a while. So it's, I do enjoy we're, this. We're running at an hour and a half. This ain't short at all. Yeah, yeah but we're shorter than two hours. That's true. That's, that's very true. true. That's very, true. very, very true. We, we did go on a few tangents, and I apologize. I, I, I didn't help. No. Well, look, this, this, this is the free form that we have now, the free form that, that uh, Santander is complaining about. So before we wrap up, don't forget, you can. You, we're going to do our shameless promotion, starting with Darflex. All right. You gentlemen and ladies, or you ladies and gentlemen, can find me on Instagram at Darth underscore Flex. That's F-L-E-X-X. To see my trainer stuff, funny stuff, and USC stuff, you can also check me out uh, for word crafting on the Inebriated Craftsman on Instagram as well. Just type that in; I'm the only one. And on Twitter, I am DF Performance, Darth Like Performance. Just type that in; you'll find me. Garbanzo, what's going on, everybody? You can uh, it, it's a uh, Garbanzo here, uh-huh. and as, 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 as the whole thing is that uh, you can find me at Bean TKE two seven eight on Twitter uh, and Darth Bean two seven eight on uh the ig the instagram as well as uh you can also find me at being to bean b-e-a-n-t-k-e 278 on uh facebook as well feel free to reach out and uh let's have, hope to see you guys soon yep and if you want to get a little vibe tastic you can check me out at, at vibe rev studios v-i-b-e-r-e-v-s-u-t-s-t-u-d-i-o-s screw that up uh that's that's for twitter for um, Instagram, uh, for the Facebook as well. Of course, VibroStudios.com currently is down as I'm as I'm trying to work some things into it, and you know that's what she said. So that'll be back up probably sometime later on this summer because you know nobody really visits that site anyway. That's not true, but it's it's down for right now. I'm doing maintenance on it, uh, one step at a time. I am not a web developer. I'm not a web guy, so it takes it takes me a minute to do these things. Either it'll, 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 it'll look completely different or it'll look exactly the same. Either way, it'll be back up in about a month or so. Um, of course, you can find us, the Geek Bros, on our Instagram, G-E-K-B-R-0-S. That's the Instagram. That is Twitter. Email us at geekbros with a zero at yahoo.com. And, of course, facebook.com slash geekbros with a zero, G-E-K-B-R-0-S. You're going to hear us on WeBeGeeksPC.com, the first place to listen to us every Wednesday. We're back on it. I apologize for last week's... Uh, snafu it shouldn't happen again and of course for the time being you can watch our buttery buttery sweet cinnamon and frosted and milky and chocolatey yeah, faces you. uh youtube.com slash vibrev studios and with that being said <laughs> what was that <laughs> i'm vibe darth flex garbanzo and remember geeking out still sounds this good keeping up with the geek bros